as you may or may not know, us Brits love going down the pub for a pint. It's a huge part of our culture and it's enjoyed by people up and down the country, but why? Why do British people love the pub so much? Let's talk about it. All right, mate, and welcome to another episode of the Dan Sensei British English Podcast. The podcast for intermediate and advanced level English learners that want to learn all about British life, British culture and British English. Today, we're talking about the pub. Now, British people love the pub and it's an essential part of daily life and local communities, but it seems to be less and less popular with the younger generations. So today, I want to talk about why the pub is so special and whether it'll continue to be important for years to come. Before we get started, please like, comment and leave a rating wherever you're listening to this podcast from. And if you want to support the podcast, check out my Patreon page for bonus content as well as the Study Squad community. Don't forget, you can find the full transcript for this episode over on dansenseienglish.com using the link in the show notes. And if you want to download the free vocabulary cheat sheet that goes with this episode, you can get it on the link below. But here's some useful words for this episode. Designated driver. Designated driver. One person in a group who agrees not to drink alcohol in order to drive the other people in the group to and from the place where they're going to go drinking. Pork scratchings. Pork scratchings. Small, hard pieces of fried pork skin, eaten cold and usually sold in bags. On tap. On tap. Drinks that come from a tap or a cask rather than a bottle. Uh, draft beer, for example. Brewery. Brewery. A company that makes beer or a place where beer is made. A veggie. A veggie. This is short for vegetarian. You know, a person who doesn't eat meat. Keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. Pay attention and look for something. Nowadays. Nowadays. At the present time, but compared to the past. Supping. Supping. Uh, a British slang word for drinking, but usually only with alcohol. Clink. Clink. To make a short ringing sound by knocking two glasses together lightly. Ingrained. Ingrained. Beliefs that are so firmly held, they're not likely to change. Footy. Footy. This is a casual way of saying football. And in the UK, we don't really say soccer. Strangers. Strangers. People that you do not know or have any kind of relationship with. You know, an unknown person. A one-armed bandit. A one-armed bandit. A type of slot machine with a large metal arm on the side that you pull to make it work. Sometimes it's called a fruit machine. Boozer. Boozer. A British slang word for pub. Smashed. Smashed. Another British slang word that means very drunk. Right then, let's get cracking. The first question I want to talk about today is what's on offer at the pub? And this might sound like a simple question, but... It's not as simple as it seems. Of course, a pub offers beers and lots of other alcoholic drinks. Of course it does. That's the main reason that people go down there local. But if you're not a big drinker or you're the designated driver, you can still enjoy your time in the pub with a soft drink. Now, in terms of alcohol, the most common drinks that you'll see are lager, bitter, ale, and cider. You can usually get wine and spirits as well. 
and you probably won't find the kind of fancy cocktails that you would expect to see in a bar. Drinks which are on tap usually come in two sizes, right? Most drinks come in a pint, which is 568 milliliters, and it'll generally cost you about a fiver, depending on the pub. You can also ask for a half, which is half a pint, and wine tends to come in either a large glass or a small glass, and spirits come in singles or doubles. Some pubs will offer bottled drinks, um, and the size kind of varies depending on the brewery. Now, in the UK, if you're in a group of people at the pub, it's pretty common to order drinks in rounds. Now, this means that you take it in turns to buy a drink for the other people in the group. If it's your round, you go to the bar and you buy a drink for everyone. And the next round of drinks are on someone else. Um, but please, always make sure that you pay for your round when it's your turn. There's nothing worse than somebody that accepts drinks off everybody else and then leaves before it's time to return the favor, right? Now, you're not under any obligation to do this. If you don't want to take part in this system because there's 10 people and it's gonna get pretty expensive and you're not gonna be drinking that much, you can simply say, no thanks, don't worry about it, I'll get mine, and everybody knows that you're gonna buy your own drinks. Lots of pubs also offer food. The first thing we should talk about is the traditional pub snack. Uh, these snacks go hand in hand with your pint, and you should definitely consider getting one as part of your order. A recent poll in the UK showed that the most popular pub snacks are pork scratchings, salted peanuts, salt and vinegar crisps, and in some places, a pickled egg. British cuisine is a bit weird, isn't it? Some pubs will offer full meals too. The most common meal you're gonna see in a pub is a Sunday roast or a Sunday dinner. As the name suggests, it's usually served at lunchtime on a Sunday, but nowadays you'll see it available almost every day. A Sunday roast is usually some roast meat, like pork or beef or chicken, served with roast potatoes, fresh veg, and loads of gravy, because British people love gravy. You might also get something called a Yorkshire pudding, which is not sweet, it's like some weird baked batter bowl thing, but it's pretty good though. Other food that you'll find down the boozer are things like steak and ale pie, a plowman's lunch, and of course, fish and chips. Don't worry if you're a veggie or vegan. These days, most pubs have got options for those of you that don't eat meat. Each pub is different, of course, but you might find there are also specials on offer. Pubs will do things like curry night or special burgers throughout the week, so keep your eyes peeled. The main difference is that in a pub, you usually need to go to the bar to order food and drinks, which is different to a restaurant. Uh, another thing to be aware of is that we don't really tip in pubs in the UK, but if you want to say thank you to the host, you can buy them a drink as part of your order. Now, the next challenge is making your way back to the table with a round of drinks. There's an art form to carrying multiple drinks from the bar back to your table without dropping them. Uh, if there are people in your way, you might say, mind your backs, and this is usually a cue for them to get out of the way and let you pass. And once you're back at your table, it's time to start supping. But before you do that, don't forget to say cheers and clink your glasses together with your fellow drinkers. When it comes to the end of the night, the barman or barmaid will ring a bell that's behind the bar and they'll shout, last orders at the bar. This signals it's your last chance 
to order drinks or snacks, so get there quick if you want one last pint. A short time after last orders, they'll ring the bell again to let you know that the pub is closing and it's time to leave. So that is what a pub offers, but what makes a British pub so special? Pubs are so ingrained in British culture that you'll see them featured on TV shows, uh, movies, or even songs. But what is it that is so special about a place where you just go to drink alcohol and eat food? To us Brits, it's much more than a place for drinking, even though that's the main activity that happens there. It's the centre of communities up and down the UK where people can go to relax, spend time with their friends, and even play some pub games in a social environment. And there's so much more to a British pub than the beer. For me, the atmosphere in pubs is really unique. The pub is usually pretty quiet and relaxing. It almost feels like being in someone's house. And that's where the name pub actually comes from. The original term was a public house. You know, a house that is open to the public. And you'll often find that the footy is on TV. And in the winter, there might be a nice warm fireplace to keep you warm. Sitting down to a nice pint is not the only thing that we do in the pub. Most pubs will offer some pub games to help you pass the time. The most common thing you'll find is a pool table where you can have a game of pool with your mates. Usually, to start the game, you need to feed some coins into the machine to release the balls and away you go. A pro tip here is that if someone is using the table before you, you need to indicate that you're waiting to play next. You do this by putting your coin on the edge of the table near the coin slot. This is universally known to mean that you've got the next game. Another game you're quite likely to see is darts. This is where there's a dart board on the wall and you throw little pointy metal things into it to score points. It's pretty common in pubs around the UK. You may also find things like pinball machines or one-armed bandits. Nowadays, you'll see quiz machines too. These games will vary between pubs and if you get a chance, you should give them a go and enjoy them as part of the British pub experience. Another really common event that happens at pubs is the quiz night. This is where you take part in a pub-wide general knowledge quiz in small teams competing with all the other teams to win some kind of prize. They're a great laugh and a good way to spend an evening. Some pubs will have like open mic nights where you can get up in front of everybody and perform some music or sing karaoke. Um, there are lots of fun things to do down the pub. Now all that stuff is, all that stuff is great, but for me, the thing that makes the pub so special is the friendly people that you meet. The staff are usually lovely and welcoming, and it's not unusual to chat to total strangers about anything from the weather to the meaning of life and everything in between. Now, you don't get that anywhere else. You can't really start a conversation with strangers on the street, but in the pub, we're all equals and part of the community. So if you're new to the UK and you're looking to meet new people and make friends, the pub is the best place to start. The last thing to talk about today is the future of the British pub. Pubs are very traditional things and as times change, the pub is starting to get left behind. Do pubs have a place in British culture 10, 20 or even 50 years from now? Historically, pubs were a place for people to gather and 
spend time together in public. You'd go there to chat with your mates and people from your local area and that's how the community was built. However, these days, due to the rise in internet and social media, it's not that important anymore. You can talk to your mates on WhatsApp and you can also meet new people on social media so you don't need the pub to do that anymore. The younger generation are more than happy to spend time with their friends virtually, whether that's playing online games together or watching videos through YouTube or having an online drinking party through Zoom. They don't really see a need for the pub anymore. And to be honest, I can kind of see where they're coming from. Going to the pub can also be a bit of an expensive experience. By the time you've traveled there, bought some pub grub and a few pints, you could be looking at paying anything upwards of 40 quid for the evening. Now, you can do most of that stuff at home for a fraction of the price. Most supermarkets sell alcohol much cheaper than you can buy in the pub, and as the UK is going through a cost of living crisis, people are cutting back on their spending and that means less trips to the pub. The pandemic also really hurt the pub industry in the UK. As people were unable to meet in public places, lots of pubs were forced to close and lots of them never reopened. And the ones that did have been really struggling to survive in a post-COVID society. You know, social distancing and masks made it hard for people to enjoy the pub atmosphere and that's caused people to stay away from their local boozer. I'm not really sure if the British pub will survive into the future, but I hope it does. It's an important place for people to come together and build communities as well as getting smashed with your mates on the weekend to help you forget about your bad week at work. It's something that I really miss since moving to Japan. And if you're living in or visiting the UK, I strongly recommend you try and you might just find you end up loving the pub as much as us Brits do. So that is all about the pub and why British people love it. I'd love to know what you think about British pubs. Have you ever been to one? And if you have, what did you think about it? If you've never been to a pub before, would you like to and why? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about British pubs. You can leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, you can send me a message on Instagram if you're listening to the audio version. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this podcast, do me a favor, leave a review on Spotify or wherever you're listening to this from. It's the best way to help the podcast grow and find new people. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button to let me know that you enjoyed this one. If you want to go one step further and support the podcast, why don't you join me on Patreon? From $5 per month, you get access to bonus episodes, videos, all that good stuff. But the most important thing is you get access to the Study Squad community. It's the perfect place if you want to improve your English, especially your English speaking, as you can chat with people and practice speaking about all sorts of different topics. We have weekly meetings where you can talk with me and other members and the more that the community grows, the more chances there'll be to make friends and take part in English conversations. I'd love to see you in there, so be sure to check out the link in the show notes. It's patreon.com forward slash dancensei. But that's it for this episode, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>